In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With your spirit. We begin a new church year this Sunday of Advent, which calls to mind for us that it is God is the one who takes the initiative in our lives, who comes into our hearts, into our midst. So let us prepare ourselves to receive him as we continue through this season towards Christmas, knowing that the Lord is with us in the flesh. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our father. Our redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All of our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turn to you, let our 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you were not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. And by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Some years ago, I was having dinner with some friends, parishioners, when I was a pastor. And one of the family members who was not particularly a regular churchgoer piped up and said, you know, when we face it, all religions for the most part are all the same because it is about how we are able to come to God. And I said, well, there may be some truth to that, but I would turn it around a little bit when it comes to Christianity. For it's not about what we do to come to God, but rather it's about God coming to us. That is the heart of our Christian faith. And that's why it's so appropriate as we begin a new church year that we call this season Advent. For the Advent is about God's coming into our lives, coming into our world. One of the oldest titles of Jesus in the Christian liturgy was the one who is to come. He who is to come. 
And it is a reminder to us that in this season, we are, as we just heard in the Gospel of Mark, to look for ways in which the coming of Christ comes into our lives, to be watchful, but also to re-understand what it means for us to be baptized Christians and why we do what we do. That we come to celebrate the Eucharist not because we're doing something for God, but rather because it's an opportunity for God to come more deeply into our lives and to be our nourishment. That we also advocate on behalf of those who are poor and vulnerable, the unborn, the person on death row, because God has come fully into our lives, taking on our human flesh. And that is where, when we're watchful, we find Christ at work. Or again, when it comes to praying for the dead and commending them to God, it is because we believe that God will take us into his eternal life. Or again, when we're called to be generous, we realize that our treasure does not belong to this world, but rather it is a heavenly treasure to come. Advent is a time, once again, to remember who we are and why we do what we do. We do everything because God comes into our lives, and in this season we are to be watchful for the ways again in which that happens. But it's also, as we hear this reading from Isaiah today, to be ever mindful that without that coming, we are lost. He begs God, break through the heavens and come down. We need that breaking forth of God coming from the heavens because there are so many breakdowns in our lives, especially in those moments when we begin to convince ourselves that we can save ourselves, to live by the so-called prosperity gospel of thinking that we are saved by the works of our hands or the power we have, the possessions that we gain, but really that we are those vulnerable people. We are a wayward people. We have so often lost our way, and we need God to break down the doors of our hearts, break through heaven and come into our midst. That fallacy, that illusion that we can save ourselves must give way to the word Advent, that God comes into our lives. And that is on full display in a certain place in Manhattan. As you know, in Rockefeller Center where they have wonderful Christmas celebrations, there is that scene of Atlas who has on his back the whole world struggling. It is a way of showing that the industry of humanity is going to bring about some salvation in this world, in this life. And so he carries on his back the world as though he can save the world. And yet, across the street from that is another image of an individual holding the globe. It's the Christ child who sits in the embrace of his mother. The Christ child who is the one who saves us rather than thinking that we can save ourselves. The season of Advent is about remembering that that the Christ child comes into our midst, comes into our world to save us. And as the old spiritual reminds us, that he is the one who has the whole world in his hands. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. As Our Lady did during the first Advent, we gather with great expectation, awaiting all that God will do in our midst through the birth of his Son, treasuring in our hearts God's promise 
to be God with us, we offer in confidence these prayers. For Pope Francis and all bishops in union with him, may the Holy Spirit continue to strengthen them in shepherding their flocks. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in our governments, in our military as first responders, and in health care, may they know the gratitude and support of a grateful nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For travelers in these days of family gatherings, may they be kept safe and be responsible in keeping each other safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing of our nation, that God will heal the wounds of the polarization, restore civil dialogue, and help us to address together the greatest needs of our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially our loved ones. May God bring them home to be with him forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessing upon us as we light the candles of this wreath throughout this season. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ who is Lord forever and ever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to, to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made visible, we who watch for that day may, may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels, archangels, the thrones and dominions, all the hosts, the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. It is he who comes in thy name alone. 
are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my brother, bishops, the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof. But only Lord, say the word. word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. <clears throat> My dear Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, I want to thank everyone for their part in allowing this Mass to be televised by you, our sponsors, ABC7, all of our crew here at the Cathedral and in the Archdiocese who take care of our communications. They do such a wonderful job for us, and we're very grateful. I want to continue to ask your support of our pastors in their parishes. As you know, uh, they're under a great deal of uh, stress and difficulty, not only in terms of running things financially, but also ways in which they feel at a distance from you. Continue to pray for them and support them. It means so much. It's uh, also wonderful to note the success we've been having with the COVID emergency fund. And if you can help us with that, we surely would appreciate it very much. May you have a blessed Advent and keep watchful of the ways that the Lord coming into your life is realized in a special way. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. When thy king shall come, I